Wednesday, June the 10th, was in the diary for a long time, simply because it was to be the day of the opening in Perth of the 2020 General Assembly of the United Free Church of Scotland. The General Assembly is the denomination's annual meeting, and for many people it's something of a highlight. It's an opportunity to meet others from different congregations in Scotland. It may be the time when we consider what's happened in the past, but it's also the time when we take time to consider where we're at in the present, and also when we are called to seek God's guidance for his work in the future. The General Assembly normally begins with the Ladies' Day on a Wednesday morning, the opening of assembly in the evening, and then business meetings on the Thursday and Friday before the closing meeting on the Friday evening. But this year, due to the pandemic with coronavirus, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. There will be no meeting of the General Assembly in 2020. And many people, myself included, are clearly disappointed. Although I'm unsure whether the General Assembly actually met in 1940, near the beginning of the Second World War, I do know that it has certainly met every other year since the present United Free Church began in its present form in 1929. And so this year, 2020, is unique. Given that we are normally given a challenge to examine ourselves, and to search yourselves at the General Assembly, my thoughts about the General Assembly have drawn me to two verses from the Psalms. In Psalm 139 we find the Psalmist's words, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Here's a true story which I feel as a challenge for us all as we consider how God might examine us and search us. In the 1920s, the then director of a large mission in the Shangtung province in China one day found himself convicted of being spiritually dry. He came to realise that although other people praised him for being a good missionary, he was actually proud of his own achievements and he realised that he needed to confess his pride to God. And out of his confession came such widespread brokenness throughout the leadership of that mission that the entire province was soon under an avalanche of the work of the Holy Spirit. And the resulting Shangtung revival which continued into the 1930s, made a deep impact on the spiritual landscape of China at that time. The reality, though, is that the most dramatic revivals in history have normally begun with a very small number of humble believers. And interestingly, those men and women who have been deemed to have been the most godly have usually been the first to humble themselves and to admit their needs. I believe that there is a challenge here for everyone who would claim a living faith in Jesus Christ. Can I therefore ask, if this faith is ours, have we the constant desire to be right with God? Might it be that God is waiting for us to admit our brokenness and in so doing, to provoke the brokenness of those around us. Indeed, when is the last time that we ask God to search our hearts and to show us where we're going astray? Might it be that we need to ask him for a fresh work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and for the grace to respond in true brokenness and humility? I pray that God would inspire us and challenge us in these days. 
God bless you.